here we are at the farm on another very misty morning. Uh, there's no wind this morning, which is a very, very rare occurrence. And I want to make the most of these conditions to push the ranges out a little bit further. So what we've done is we've taken the information that we obtained from the optimal charge weight test about a week ago. If you haven't seen that video, basically what we did is we found the powder charge that is most accurate in this rifle. And we've taken all that information uh, and we've entered it into the ballistics software. So you can see all the information over there. Um, but we don't trust the information that the ballistic software gives us. We want to test it in real life just to make sure that it is correct. Um, because even things like ballistic coefficients that they give you, BCs can change with velocities, uh, BCs can change in certain conditions. So we want to actually go and validate that. So we've got the uh, rifle out here today, all set up nicely. We're going to be putting targets out um, after zeroing at 100 meters. We're going to be putting targets out 200, 300, 400, maybe even 500 if we can get there. And um, we've got limited space here, but hopefully we can get to 500 and then essentially just shoot maybe three shots at each different distance and make sure that the bullet is dropping the same as what the ballistics application is telling us. And if it isn't, we have to change our information in the software in some way so that we can actually uh, calibrate the, uh, the BC or calibrate the velocity or whatever we need to do to get that trajectory in real life matching the trajectory we're getting given in the ballistic software that way when it comes to a real life situation like hunting trip when we range the ammo and we enter the range into the ballistic software we know that it's going to give us the exact exactly the perfect amount of drop that we need to enter into the scope let's get straight to it guys high-tech sandbag also known as a packet of rice straight from the shop <laughs> Should do the job pretty pretty well. As always, we make sure there's no parallax error. Let's give it one more. Okay, slight change of plans. I don't know if you can see the two gongs behind me there. There's an eight inch gong and a 20 inch gong, something like that. And I've set them out at approximately 500 meters. We're gonna skip anything between 200 and 400. Um, you only really need one or two different distances to check if your information is right, to kind of do your trajectory calibration. Um, we don't you don't need a whole lot more because if one is correct then the rest will be correct So we've zeroed at hundred and all we really need to do is shoot it at 500 slash 600 or whatever that is those gongs out there We'll measure them when we get back and just see where the point of impact is if it's high or if it's low Then we know we've got to adjust our BC or adjust our well, we've checked the muzzle velocity So it's got to be the BC then um, You know, we, we've entered everything else. So there's only one variable left and that's the BC Um yeah, let's get let's get there and do it. The shots are pretty much touching each other, but a few inches high. So we'll put another one in there. Okay, so we've got three shots on the larger gong. Probably a, I don't know, four or five inch group, uh, which is still sub MOA, I'm very happy with that. But all the shots are high. Um, so we're gonna bring it down two clicks, and then we're gonna take a shot at the eight inch gong, the smaller gong at 450 meters, and see if we can get a first first shot hit. Then we'll know that, that, that our um, drop date is pretty much confirmed. So we are gonna go, distance 452 we're gonna go 2.5 minus let's go minus two clicks and we should get a first shot hit here I'm hoping if we do then we know we, we're on the right track
Nailed it. Let's put one more on there, or maybe two. <laughs> one more. There you go. We are consistently hitting uh, a 20 centimeter target um, at 450 meters. Um, so I'm very, very happy with that. And from what I can see, it's not super clear to me, but from what I can see, those three shots are kind of peppered around the center. Um, so we have done our trajectory calibration, and now all we need to do is take that information of how much uh, drop there is, put it back into our ballistic software, and reassess what our BC is and then we'll be sorted. So there you go guys. That's three shots over there on the 20 inch gong. I was aiming at the red dot in the middle. First two shots drifted 0.2 mils high and the third shot went a bit off to the left but still a little bit high so what's important here is we've we've got a very tight vertical uh dispersion of the group very very tight it's probably about an inch and a half uh vertical which is really good and we are able to very easily look through the first focal plane scope we can count okay it's 0.2 mils high so we click two clicks down and we're dead on and these are the three shots on the small gong. That gong is probably the size of my hand. And at 450 meters, I'm guessing that group is, I don't know, two or three inches across, which makes it sub MOA. Uh, I'm not too, too concerned about group size in this instance. It's, this test is to do with uh, calibrating the trajectory. And from what I've seen here, all those three shots are right around the center. So we are spot on, perfect. Last thing we're going to do, just for fun, is to put a 2 litre water bottle, or two, <laughs> down there at uh, 450 slash 500 metres um, and see if we can knock them down. Um, that'll be a good real life test on, uh, on kind of the, the kill zone of a medium sized game animal. If we can drop this thing then we know that we can comfortably take a shot at 400, 500, 600 metres and drop an animal in its tracks straight through the vitals. Then we'll know that our job is done. Let's go do it. I've placed these two bottles, one right next to the, the large gong, so one at 500 meters, and the other one next to the small gong, so that's 450 meters. And up there, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. By those trees there, that's where we're gonna be parking the truck and shooting from. So it's a very long way off. Let's see if we can get them. So the wind has picked up and it's changed direction to from right next to us. So this is going to change things a lot and make things a lot more difficult. So I'm kind of not, not even sure if I'm going to hit those bottles now, but it's worth a try. We've got 11 kilometers per hour from 90 degrees. Let's input that in and see what we get. Okay, instead of 0.2, we have 0.6 now for the wind, 0.6 mils. That's, that's a lot. So let's see if we can do this. Let's just give it a bash, shall we? Right, before we do anything else, I do want to uh, mention something very quickly. A lot of you were asking questions about my spotting scope last time. Uh, this is an Optizan spotting scope. Uh, it's nothing extremely fancy. It's actually one of the, you could call it a, like, less expensive spotting scopes out there. Um, I wasn't gonna go and spend a fortune on a spotting scope simply because I've got really good glass on my on our scopes and I'd rather put the money into that than into a good spotting scope. However, it's a really nice thing to have because it goes up to 60 times magnification and sometimes with a 20 times scope or even a 25 times scope, 32, you can't see your hits down target. So something like this is nice because you can have it set up next to you on 60 times, focused on the target, take a quick glance next to you and you can see exactly uh, where your hits are. It's really helpful. I'll put info to this down in the video description, you can check it out.
quick like just off to the right. Let's try one more. I'm gonna hold just to the left edge of the bottle now. Well, there you go. That right there is a hit. I'm really surprised the bottle didn't knock itself over. It's the exit right over there. Really, really surprised. But I did notice the water level was down, so kind of stopped shooting and decided to call it a day there. Not gonna waste more bullets on that other bottle. Um, I wanna save the bullets for the actual animals. <laughs> um, and that's actually how the, the burger field, the hunting bullets are supposed to perform. They're supposed to penetrate a few inches of of tissue before they start expanding and that basically allows the the bullet to get through the, the skin the bone the outer covering of the animal and then explosively uh, open up in the vital area and um, we saw that on the on the warthog video a few weeks ago or a few months ago um, that warthog was devastating damage but that was from really close these these bullets are more made for long range shooting so at longer range they'll penetrate and then explosively uh, pop whereas at closer range they'll they're going so fast that they tend to just open on impact um, so yeah really good hunting bullets so to finish things off we've got the Strelok Pro app open so I can show you what to do from here with the information you've gathered we've added things like temperature barometric pressure all of those variables We've got the exact scope part, we've got the exact zero distance, we've got the exact muzzle velocity. So the only variable that we don't know as fact is the ballistic coefficient. Obviously the, the bullet box gives us the rough BC, but BCs can change according to the speed that the bullets fired and a few other variables like that, uh, twist rate, all of that. So we are gonna go to trajectory calibration at the bottom, so that's that icon over there and we know the speed already, so we're gonna go BC. And from here, it's quite simple. We've got the, the distance that we did the uh, test at 494 meters, and as you will remember, we noted that the point of impact was 10 centimeters higher than it should have been. Um, so 10 centimeters at 500 meters, if you convert that to mils, that's 0.2 mils. So we're going to subtract 0.2 mils from the elevation in MRAD, and that ends up being 2.76. We're going to say done. We're going to go calculate, and that gives us our actual BC at the bottom of there. So that's the BC that we're going to use from now on for all our calculations, and that should mean that we are spot on when it comes to the long-range hunting. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.